lot of people see all the Bible, I'm about to do a 180 and do completely different. Well, you're going to be different, but you're not going to be completely it's gonna different. More, it's going to make you wise. better. Wise. And you're going to go through some it, shit. I feel like I'm getting wiser when I do read it. Mm -hmm. you know? yep. You're going you're gonna to go through some, some, some bad seeming shit, but it's going to make you better. And then, he, then he'll might throw you a ball and some good shit happens to you. Yeah. You know? Like that that happens all the time. When, when good stuff happens, we be like, ah, well, sorry, my people about to jack me up or something, man. Or some bad shit happens. Instead of just being damn down on my luck, pray about it, you may fast or whatever you do about it, then you start believing like, hey, something good probably gonna come out of this. You know? Yeah. Like, if, like if your girl leaves you, right? Like, damn, my woman just left me out, fucked up. Yeah. Guess what? Better she might have been a wicked girl. ass bitch. Yeah, been a wicked for you, bad you away from her, you know? Get a whole new, better one, way yeah. better. That, that's what it is to get into what you into. Pilot. You know what yep. I mean? Less headaches and all of that. Yeah. You know? That's cook better, but you know, yeah. but that's healthier or whatever. Yeah. Keep that healthy. Let's real. Somebody have something they want to uh, bring out and talk about? Yeah. 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 Two. Yeah. So chapter 2 verse 1 My son if thou come to serve the Lord Prepare thy soul for temptation Set thy heart aright And constantly endure And make not haste in the time of trouble uh -huh. She was explaining to you know, Jake That when you come into this thing man You're going to start you pretty much going to start catching hell you're gonna be realizing like, damn, like before I came into this, it seemed like everything was going all right, all right for me, but you was in the days of darkness. Now that you done woke up, now you're starting to catch the affliction, you know? That's the Lord basically uh, throwing those those trials at you, man, just to test your faith now that you are awoke, you know? And that's, and, and that's what it is when you, when you wake up and you, be, uh, you begin to serve the Lord. You gotta prepare your, your, yourself for different uh, obstacles that the Lord gonna lay before you, man. Different uh, tribulations, you know? Nah, he was talking about something else. I was telling you something else. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. That's kind of a prophecy. I'm talking yeah. to which one. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, so like the second chapter? Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Um, let me read, let me read, let me read it again. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul. For now, now, now that's, that's, that's a serious thing. Because not all the teachers are here to serve the Lord. You may be serving the men of the Lord, but you're serving the Lord. You may be serving your homies, you know, just being an example of them, right? Just, just introducing them, which is a service of the Lord. You never know what your job may be of the Lord, but whatever it is, and you understand that your calling is of the Lord, it's talking to you right here. You know? Prepare thy soul for temptation. Know that you're going to be tempted to, because that part of that temptation is uh, to see if that the devil can uproot you. Out of uh, out of this, if you if you ain't deeply founded, you can get uprooted out of it. Yeah. Set thy heart aright, leprosy, man, <laughs> and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Constantly endure, it means to make hard, but, but just take it. It's like having a shield. Put that shield, that hard shield on, and just take all of that and block through it. It don't mean dodge and run. And, now, deal with it and stand strong. 
right there, stand boldly for it. Hey, it's, it's, it's pretty much like I'm, a, it's, I'm speaking an, anal an, an analogy, but it's almost like think of it like this. And Jake, when we young, we do this. Um, you make yourself hard when you're going through some type of affliction towards your body, right? Like when you uh, when you go to uh, football practice, they have that uh, particular uh, exercise when you. Uh, you read that first. You just read that, and then you still said what you said. Right. Yeah, that's, the, that's the, just the devil. Get out of here. You're the devil. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Um, oh my God, Jesus is, is, yeah. is not biblical. Dildo head. You're a dildo head. <laughs> In the words of uh, Apostle Raka, these women are dildo heads, man. You, you really shouldn't. We shouldn't even uh, pay them no fucking mind, man. He kind of pissed me off. How they said? Yeah. They said this image is not biblical. Yeah. This is a devil. This yeah. is not Jesus. And then she goes, but that's Jesus. Yeah, that's why the Apostle calls them dildo hands, man. Who said that? These women are... The Bible! Women don't know how to comprehend shit. You guys are so strong with you guys. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. What you saying, bro? No, I was, I was making the analogy about the example of enduring something. Now, when you... When you if you play football, you, you're familiar with the exercise that your coach put you through. You even saw it in that scene in Boys in the Hood, when uh, basically you about to do a run through, yeah, yeah. and you got all the all the uh, the linemen yeah. or, or the, uh, the uh, defensive, backs. defensive backs, and they basically on the line, and they both they on both sides they're lined up, getting ready to come and run and, and, and try to knock you off your feet while you run in between them, slow you up, to slow you up and all that shit, man. But to get through that, you got to make yourself hard. And, and you know what I'm saying, you're going to get hit, you know what I'm saying, but you ain't going to be knocked off your tracks, so to speak, man. You're going to make it all the way to the other side, man. But if you actually get hit and you fall, you didn't, you really didn't endure it, man. And your coach is going to look at you like, hey, man, what, what's up, man? You weak. You weak, man. We need, we need a strong uh, uh, defensive back and linemen on this squad. It's the same thing with this with this uh, knowledge, man. When you start catching hell in this thing, man, uh, deal with it. You know, that's that's how you endure. Now, uh, um, verse three: Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Whatever, whatever comes your way, the heavenly Father. You see, if you come and serve the Lord, all these things that's gonna come upon you is to build you up, to make you harder, to make you better, to make you wise. You know. So it said, it said, um, what did it say right there? Make not what? Make not haste. And what did it say after that? Um, it, it says, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Because what do you increase with? That knowledge, wisdom, and that hardness that comes with endurance through all of that. And the patience of not making haste to try to get out of it. Because patience means to, uh, to suffer. After you suffer through something, you, you don't make haste to hurry up and get out of it. You deal with it, and once it's over, you're, you're made better. Why that? Because now, like you said, you're wiser, you're stronger, or whatever. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Because you're going to be changed to a lower state in this society. Better be changed into a, a righteous lower state than, than the lower state that everybody gonna catch by the end of this thing. The day of the Lord, man, everybody gonna be in a lower state. Everybody's gonna be hungry and, and, and in famine unless you took the chip. And if you took the chip, you're gonna be a little, you're not gonna be low as, as early, but guess what? You're gonna be even lower. Because right. you're gonna feel the burn of that missile. You probably gonna starve before that and then feel the burn of that missile. That was it on that? Oh, oh, let me get this verse 7 because it ties in with uh, Matthew 7 about uh, going uh, going a straight way instead of a broad way. It says, uh, Sirach 2, 
and seven. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. You know? Don't go that goes, matter of fact. Don't go, don't go, don't, don't, don't fall by the wayside, man. Stay on that straight, narrow path and fear the Lord, man. You know, it's like walking that tight rope and you fearing the Heavenly Father, man, you don't want to fall off that thing. Because you know if you fall off, either way, you're going to fall into destruction. You know? A lot of guys in, in this troop, they come in and then they end up falling by the wayside, man. And they usually don't have the proper amount of fear that a man's supposed to have uh, to the Lord. That's why when they fall out, they have no shame. You know? If you fall out and you have no conscience about that, you had you never have fear of the Heavenly Father to begin with. The fear was really never there, man. You know? Straight up, man. Second entrance. Seven and three. And I said, Speak on by your hour. Then said, Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it? Yeah, to rule it. If you can't get, if you can't, okay, so you're in a great place now, a big wide open area now. But then you got to go through this real narrow crawl space. But behind that crawl space, there's an even greater area, right? But you have to go through that narrow place to get to it. You can't even see that narrow place from where you're standing. So once you go through it, that's not our kind of Bible. Yeah, if he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? If you didn't go through the little narrow area, you're uncomfortable and uh, from, you know getting dirty and, and low and all of that on the ground, tasting dust and all of that, or, or if you cross that crawl space, snakes and all types of shit could be down there. If you can't get through that, by the time you get through that, the whole wonderful shower and, and, and big mansion and whatever else analogy you want to make that's waiting for you on the other side, you don't deserve to get through that. That's like, it's going to say, that's what it's like entering into the kingdom of heaven. There's another thing. There's another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field, and it's full of all good things. Hey, hey, just to tie this in right quick, the city is so broad in the kingdom of heaven is that it spans throughout different galaxies. And you will be able to travel to those other galaxies. That's how broad, when you're in righteousness, is going to be for us. Right now, we just have, we can't get up the street in the ghetto. Right now, that's the narrow that we're in now. But a lot of you thinking that narrow is a, is, is a broad way to not, not to go in that, uh, not to go uh, into righteousness, to that real narrow righteous way. But when you see what's on the other side, if you, if you niggas and speaks out here knew what was on the other side of this life, we're out here trying to tell you what's on the other, what's coming in at the end of this life and what's on the other side of this life. Those two things should have you up here trying to get this word or out there teaching to give others that word. That's right. That's what should be happening. Because that's what this is. That's what this analogy right here is about. The entrance thereof is narrow and it's setting a dangerous place to fall. It's a dangerous place. To, it's a dangerous way to walk, a dangerous way to live to get into the kingdom of heaven. There's pitfalls all the time. The brother right now was talking about how he got fans following me. But what, 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 what do you call him, brother? He's going to parent listen all the time. You know, he, he's telling, hey, fans is after me right now. You know? It's a dangerous way. All types of shit. Demons fuck with us all the time. Only because the spirit of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, has angels on us to protect us. Right. That might be the difference. But that is the difference for him why he's still here today. Because if it was one of you other two-third niggas, a regular two-third nigga that ain't listening to this, they'd probably, like he admitted himself, oh, they probably already took me out if I wasn't trying to see.